Hello there, Becky here from Chimera Crafting. Welcome to my new dye tutorial. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dyeing these beauties, which are some uh, skeins of Blue Face Lester and Nylon Mix Sock White. Now, what I want to do, this is in part um, a custom order. So my customer has been very kind and given me permission to film and share the process but I will be dying a couple of extras um, just in case anyone likes the look of them too. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, um, a kind of low immersion three colour dye. Um, the idea behind it is that the colour is going to be able to move, that it's going to be able to flow and um, be a little bit random in its placement but a little bit controlled too. Uh, so one of the last um, big experiments that I did was just using up dye ends, uh, bits and bobs that I had stock that I needed to use up. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more controlled and a little bit more measured. So I'm going to get these beauties in to soak uh, just in plain water. And uh, next time I see you, we'll be uh, cracking on with the experiment. Here are those skeins soaking. They've been soaking for a couple of hours. You can see that the um, fibres have opened up, uh, they've bloomed, lovely, just about ready to pop in my pot. So this is the yarn in a steamer tray, one of my um, uh, shallow steamer trays. I have several skeins here, if I zoom back just so you can sort of see how I've laid them out roughly. I've kind of scruffled them up a little bit. I do want the die to be semi-random placed, but with a little bit of control over it too. Um, so this is acidic water. The acid that I've chosen to use on these is uh, just white vinegar, just so you know. And this is the soaked yarn that I've added to it. So the next step will be adding the beautiful colours. So here are the mixed pigments um, that I've uh, put together. Uh, as I've mentioned in all of my other videos, never handle acid dye powders without a face mask. It's really important. The fine particulate is not good for you at all. Uh, now, however, that these are suspended in uh, plain water, it should be OK. So we've got like a golden yellow that you can see here, an orangey yellow. It looks a bit like squash. Don't drink it for the reasons I've already stated and a lovely sort of light but bright um, pink. I'm in love with these colours at the moment as a combination um, so I'm really excited to be working with these three together. Okay so I have my gloves on um, do not want to get stained hopefully so I'm going to add some of this gorgeous pinky shade to the centre of the pan and a little bit elsewhere too. There we go. Last little bit there. And we're going to go for this goldeny soft yellow next. Get some right to the top. There we go. So next up is going to be the sort of brighter orangey, orangey colour. And we're just going to sort of pour a few blobs of this. Now, oops, excuse that focus there. Now there's a, just enough water in, in my um, dye pan for this to uh, be able to move the colours a little bit. We'll be able to move and flow around the yarn. Uh, but not too much so it shouldn't end up completely random that's the theory anyway so this is a fairly low immersion dye that we're doing at the moment I'll zoom back so you can see how I've placed that little bit I think I'm going to make up a little bit more pink and uh, add to that too There we go. So we've got a little bit more of the pink made up. Uh, as I said earlier on, I do do this off camera because of needing to wear the face mask 
um, whilst I'm mixing that. Also, another cautionary note is that any um, items that you use when you're working with acid dyes are no longer food safe. So anything including, you know, jugs, crock pots, if you decide to go that route, that sort of idea, all of that becomes non-food safe after use with acid dyes. So I store and keep up everything absolutely separate to anything that I'm going to be uh, cooking with at any point in the future. Just pop a little bit more of that there. Now then we're going to take a little bit of a, of a step back. So you can see. Wonderful. So you can see that that water is coming up to temperature a little bit now. So I'm going to leave it to it, let it cook, and then I will check back with you um, in a moment or two. So you can see how the colour has spread around a little bit. It's also beginning to clear. The yarn is beginning to take um, that pigment up. Acid dyes, of course, work with the use of acid and applied heat. And that's how they stick and bond really well with the fibre. Now, with the way that I've kind of arranged the skein, you can see they're kind of in a line, but also slightly twisted. This is a good way of um, being able to control, in inverted commas, to a certain degree, just how that colour is taken up. So if I sort of part this a little bit, bring that up to the surface, you can see the inside, it still has colour, but it's a little bit paler to the outside. So this will create a really interesting and fun variegated effect across the whole of the skein. Have a look. Yeah, that water is getting to be clear. I don't think I was able to illustrate that particularly well then. Yeah, you can kind of see that it's still got some pigment in it. Um, so I need to leave these to cook until uh, all of that water is clear. And of course, if you've followed me for a while, you know that I reserve that acidic water that has cleared and I reuse that once it's cooled. I store it in big five litre containers um, and I reuse that as often, uh, as many times as I possibly can to conserve the water, of course. So we're going to leave this to cook a little bit longer um, and we will check back shortly. So checking back in again, I'm using a stainless steel a uh, little a spatula to show you there is still a little bit of yellow in the in the water that pigment seems to be taken up and um, last of all but you can see that it is predominantly clear so again we'll just part the skein a little bit so you can see to the bottom you can see it's still got a, a yellowish hue so it needs cooking a little bit longer and again you can kind of see there we go a little bit better how it alters the depth of the um, shade as it's taken up. Okay, check back in a moment and we are done. Now I've moved the skeins around um, just to make sure that I was happy with the coverage, where the coverage was, how certain areas have been left um, paler allowing the natural beauty of the yarn to, to shine through as well and as you can also see now that that water is clear so we're going to let this um, cool and then we're going to rinse it I'm very excited about this and because it's a custom dye of course I've been requested these um, specific colours um, it's actually really encouraging me to limit my palette because every now and then I have to say I do tend to kind of overdo it a little bit, I think. Like, I, I don't know what I would add to this if I was given free reign, but I, I would probably add something. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to keep it delicate and we're going to keep it gentle. And that's the plan. Wonderful. And I'll check in and show you it rinsing. And there we are, we're rinsing. Now, the water is warm, it's not hot. It's been, the steam's been a little bit dramatic at the moment because it's quite chilly here, so it's uh, steaming a little bit more than, than, than you'd expect, but you can see the way I'm putting my hand in there. It's only um, a little bit sort of hotter than blood temperature, really. So let's have a close-up look and see how some of these colours are playing um, along the length of the yarn. Beautiful. Here are a couple of the rinsed uh, skeins laid out now they're still very wet 
But after sending photographs to my customer, we both agreed that what it could do with is just a little bit of an over dye to sort of bring some of the blank areas a little bit more colour. So I'm actually going to be aiming for a sort of golden yellowy peachy maybe over dye just really pale almost to glaze it just to shift these colours a little bit. So I will share that process too. So I'm losing the light a little bit here but you can see I've popped the yarn into a very pale over dye or glaze of a peachy shade. If I just grab this teaspoon you can see more golden yellow just to fill in some of those gaps and blend the transitions a little bit better. So next up is basically waiting for it to dry. Hello Rogue, I have a cat come to see me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to dry it, I'm going to dry it overnight um, and hopefully it will be dry enough to be able to show you how it looks tomorrow. But the wonders of video, of course, that's just going to be in a moment or two. Okay, so here we are, the finished result. How pretty are these? Here's the skein. And you can see how the colours all play together really beautifully. That pink is still there. There's still some lovely paler sections, but that over dye is evened out. Um, uh, the colour differences so it's a lot more smooth the transition which is what my customer wanted for these now I do have a couple extra in my shop which of course you're welcome to have a look at this is blue face Leicester and nylon mix sock weight 350 meters per 100 gram uh, skein British sourced blue face Leicester of course so I'd love to know what you think if you've enjoyed this video, please do let me know. Please like it, leave a comment. It always really helps. Thank you very much and I will be making another video soon.